Thirdly, during COVID-19, the public was belatedly informed by a minister in this House that his senior cabinet colleagues were aware by October 2020 that previous government assurances on trace together being solely used for contract tracing were effectively false statements of fact. Misrepresentations had hitherto been made by various government ministers and possibly in this House even before October 2020, and they stood uncorrected for months. The PAP government took almost nine months before it disclosed to Singaporeans that the Singapore Police Force sought to collect trace together data for an investigation in May 2020, even as the PAP continued to assert right through the rest of the year that trace together was only to be used for contact tracing. Unlike as represented by the PM, these are not events that I quote are clustered together, all coming at one go. Instead, they reveal a pattern of behaviour over a period of time of the PAP engaging in half-truths on matters of significant public interest. And this behaviour goes a long way to explain why there is real disquiet among Singaporeans today when the PAP invokes the memory of pioneer generation PAP leaders and talks about trust. Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan, you wanted to make a clarification? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to address Mr. Pritam Singh's suggestion that we had been somehow being tardy or reticent with information with respect to Trace Together. Now, I don't want this to become a whole repeat of an extended discussion which we had on this matter. Mr. Singh will remember this. Uh, we had this extended discussion in early 2021. But just to refresh your memory, Trace Together is a system that temporarily collected Bluetooth proximity data without GPS coordinates, without movement data, and the data is expunged after 25 days. When I first was involved with the design of the system, it was purely for the purposes of contact tracing, dealing with a clear and present danger that COVID-19 presented to our population. I made a statement, I think it was in June 2020, which omitted four important words. The four missing words, which I said before, was subject to prevailing legislation. What I had not known when I made the assurance that the data would not be available to law enforcement agencies was that Section 20 of the CPC in fact applied to trace together data as it does to all other information which a person may have access to, which the police may need for the purposes of investigation. Anyway, I made that statement in ignorance of the prevailing legislation, and I omitted those four words in June 2020. Around about, I believe, near the end of October 2020, a member of the public wrote to me and said, are you sure? Please check. So I said, thank you, and I did get my staff to check. So that was already into November. And when my staff in the Smart Nation office then told me, actually, Section 20 of the CPC may be relevant, that's when you will recall I sat in this house right from this stand. I had many sleepless nights deciding what we do about this. Do we make legislative changes, or do we instruct the police, or could we even instruct the police to proscribe their access to this data, although, legally speaking, they had. So there was sleepless nights on my part, intense discussions internally between multiple agencies on part of the government in November 2020. And my staff will also recall I told them, whatever it is, when we finish this internal review, we will come back here and we will come clean in my usual fashion and explain the situation. 
We didn't have a sitting in December, but I believe it was Mr. Christopher de Souza who filed a question. I think it was in December 2020. And on the 4th of January 2021, um, the answer was answered, I believe, by the MOS of Home Affairs, Desmond Tan. On the 5th of January, I added further clarifications. And I also indicated, I think a few days after that, that we will come back to Parliament in February 2021 with legislative changes to circumscribe the access by law enforcement agencies into trace together data. Now, I've taken some pains, and I'm sorry to take up the time, but I hope, Mr. Singh, you will realise that I have never deliberately engaged in any obfuscation prevarication or delay. I have at all times acted in good faith. I have tried to make sure that in design, in execution and in coordination of a complex matter in an emergency, I have been transparent and forthright with the people. And I object to your characterization and use of an old debate which was settled in Parliament to suggest that there is a pattern of delay, prevarication, and obfuscation. I object to that characterization. Mr. Pritam Singh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I note uh, Minister Vivian's objection. Let me just uh, share some details about what happened in January and February in this House in the course of that debate. NCMP Leong Man Wai had asked the Minister when did you discover that your statement was going to be affected by the CPC? The minister did not answer that question. But when, when, when was the first? This was in January. And the point here is there were ministers who were in this house who knew that actually they were already in receipt of knowledge in October 2020 about the fact that Trace Together applied to the CPC. The minister admitted that. But that was a month later in February, if I recall, February 2021, where the minister said, and let me pull out the hands out, I may just have a bit of it here, when it was checked uh, at the end of October, this is Minister Vivian's words, I was asked basically, what did I spend November doing? Double checking the legislation and then having among sleepless nights and conversations, do we carve it out, how do we do it? So that occupied us in November, that's what you said. I'm not disputing that. What I'm saying is that there is a significant delay in time before questions are asked of the government. Uh, when did, was Minister Vivian the only one looking at Trace Together and the applicability of Trace Together in May of 2020? I think Minister Shanmugam had a discussion with a mayor in, uh, what is it, the mayor of New York, I believe, talking about privacy concerns, Trace Together concerns. And my point is, did no one in the government consider the applicability of Section 20 to the CPC? We don't know that. But what we do know is that the Prime Minister then apologised, not in January, not in February, not in October, November or December, but in March, after we had dealt with the issue. And that's my point. There's significant delay. Minister Vivian Balakrishnan. Mr Singh. Is there really a delay? Look at that timeline which you, I have said and you have just repeated. First of all, I take responsibility. I'm in charge. I was in charge of the program. I became aware end of November, end of, no, I was asked the question by a member of public, not even in this house, end of October. I spent November double checking the facts, coordinating examining the policy op options, discussing with my colleagues. And I, I also told my staff, we will clear all this, whichever way it falls. A question is asked by Mr. Christopher de Souza in December. Unfortunately, we didn't sit in December. Early January, we answered it. I've added further clarifications. I then embarked on a process in fact, we had to get a certificate of urgency for legislative changes. 
in February, we had this debate. I don't think I delayed or obfuscated, and at all times, you know, I have always been upfront and clean. Mr. Leong knows that as well. I mean, I've been here long enough. People know the way I operate. So that's why I'm objecting to your insinuation that there's any undue delay or any attempt at obfuscation or lack of transparency. That's not the way we do it. Minister Shamugam, you have a clarification? Third point is Mr. Singh suggesting, the leader of the opposition, that I knew, because let's not make inventos, that I knew of Mr. Vivian Balakrishnan's statement and deliberately kept quiet. The final point about innuendo and suggestions, my question to the minister is this. Did the minister or anybody in MHA ring the bell in government to say, actually, Section 20 of the CPC applies for Trace Together well before October 2020?